pills. Right. Uh, we live. What's going on? What's going on, people? Y'all come on in. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello. Welcome to the mail room. going on people say hello when you come in if this is your first time catching us moss mail live or in the mail room please signify that by typing the number one and saying hello we're gonna get started momentarily I guess the intro was done. <laughs> My goodness. That's the power. Okay. Oh, well. It is what it is. Yeah. So much for the intro, people. <laughs> All right. Welcome to Moss Mail Live. It is Tuesday, January the 21st. <sighs> Another week, y'all, in the month of January, in the year of our Lord, 2020, and we're so grateful for it, all right? What's going on, cuz? Please share, invite your people in, and uh, let's see, let's go ahead and get started. What's, what's, got announcements? Uh, still have to. T-shirts if you want one. Um, next month, one. Yeah. First and the eighth. First and the eighth, we will be doing. Um, Moss Mail, is it? Nope. It's. You should know is doing announcements. That's part of it. Uh, First and the eighth, we'll be in Bowling Green, Kentucky next month uh, with Travis and Cassandra Brown. And we'll be doing a uh, Getting Back to Love um, panel discussions. Uh, so we'll be within February the 1st. Uh, that the first Saturday in February, the second Saturday in February, and then the last weekend in February, we're going to be uh, attending a um, ball with them where you can dress up, put your nice gowns and tuxedos and your nice eyelashes and all that stuff on. And uh, we do have that information posted, I believe, on the Moss Mill Live page. But we'll definitely post that, excuse me, after the live is over. Um, just in case there's anybody in the Bowling Green area that's watching us, as well as anybody that may be from North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, Virginia, Tennessee area that who would like to attend, we'll definitely have that information for you. Um, so 
Yeah. I think that's about it. And if this is your first time, please um, subscribe to our YouTube page. Uh, with Moss Mail on uh, live YouTube. As well as our page for Facebook, which is also Moss Mail Live. Yeah, so um, if you missed us, uh, we told you we were going to do a uh, story time um, about when we got caught down by the river naked. But we have not posted that on Facebook. So you will have to check that out on the YouTube channel. So just go to YouTube.com. In the search, type in Moss Mail Live, three separate words, Moss Mail Live. Our page should come up. Click on that. Click the subscribe um, tab, and there's a notification bell. You want to click that. It's going to do a little drop down. Click the all option so that you will be informed on all of our posts whenever we uh, post there and when we may even go live there. So. Um, yeah, got any shout outs? Mm. Mm. All right, no shout outs tonight. <laughs> <laughs> so, shout out to everybody that's still sober in 2020. Uh, it is a brand new year, and we're grateful for it. And uh, we expect great things in this year, 2020. Um, it. Yeah, it seems like we've been away for a while, y'all. Yeah. So, yeah, y'all help us. Let's not help us not to be slacking this year. <laughs> um. So, yeah, who's on with us that we can shout out? Mm -hmm. The uh, Miss Angelica Friday's here, and Melissa Jones, Lisa, and Teresa Banks that I know of that I can see. Okay. Um, yeah. All right. Well, hello to everybody. Uh, we are gonna go ahead and get started with this wonderful um, Moss Mail. As you can tell by the title, um. Yeah, we need y'all's help and your opinion tonight, your expertise as it relates to being frustrated and fighting in a relationship. All right, let's go. Okay, here goes. All right, prepare your glasses because you're really going to need a drink for this, whether it's juice, water, whatever you like, tea. All right, here we go. Dear Brad and Terry, Happy New Year to you both. I am going to try to make this brief as I can. I am writing in, in on behalf of my best friend because she would probably never reach out to you all. I am tired of seeing her go through the drama of a dysfunctional marriage. She recently called me crying and saying that she is tired, tired of fighting with her husband and tired of fighting for her marriage. She confessed to me to... She confessed to go through years of verbal abuse, physical abuse, and even some sexual abuse at the hands of her husband. He has gotten bolder with his cheating as well. It used to be that he tried to hide his cheating under the guise of him doing work, but now he is blatant with the disrespect and cheating. Recently, my friend was supposed to, to attend an event with her husband, but he called her and told her, ahead of and uh, to go ahead and go and he would uh, he would uh meet her at the venue because he was running behind because of work she went ahead and made it to the event in expectation that her husband would join her little did she know that her husband arrived at the event but escorting someone that he had introduced her to a few weeks back. Needless to say, her husband ignored my friend the whole time and acted as if my friend wasn't even his wife. He paraded around the event as if he and the other woman were a couple. Thankfully, my friend held it together and didn't disrupt the event. This is just one example of the disrespect that she is experiencing. He publicly cusses her out and humiliates her, 
but afterwards confesses his love for her to her and others. She has to give him all of her money and she holds him down no matter what, but he doesn't appreciate her at all. What advice can you give to my friend? I told her to hit him on the head with a frying pan, but I don't want to want to have to visit her in jail. Please help her. No more fights. Sincerely, no more fights. Okay. <sighs> this is a lot to unpackage. Uh, so I'm going to recap it. Line upon line. And we'll, we'll discuss it. And you all feel free to jump in where you fit in. Um, and please share. So let's start from the beginning. First of all, thank you, Emailer, for writing in to us and trusting us with this situation, with this scenario with your friend. Um, it's very unfortunate that she's experiencing fatigue and frustration and um, lack of strength to fight for her marriage. Um, but given the whole scenario, I can understand why she's tired. So let's, let's go back over it. So the emailer tonight is, has written in on behalf of her best friend, um, who's going through a whole lot in her marriage. So the best friend recently called her friend crying because she's tired of fighting for her marriage, and she's tired of fighting her husband. Um, she has been experiencing years of verbal abuse, physical abuse, and sexual abuse. And let me just pause right there because, excuse me, any form of abuse is not acceptable in relationships. And I don't care if you're married. I don't care if you have a ring. I don't care if you have a marriage license. That's not a license for anybody to accept or be the recipient of abuse or the giver of abuse, the initiator of abuse. So, um, yeah, so she she's experienced a lot of abuse. And I can only imagine, you know, what, this lady is going through to have to continually go through this, whether it be physical abuse, whether it be sexual abuse, whether it be mental abuse, uh, only to remain. Um, and sometimes in relationships, when things are dysfunctional, your love for a person can hold you hostage um, and keep you as a prisoner <laughs> to the dysfunction and it'll keep you believing in that person that things are going to get better or like she said that after the abuse occurs the, the husband confesses his love for her and he he loves her and all this he probably may give her gifts I don't know uh guilt gifts but you know that's another way of playing on somebody's emotion to keep them hooked in and locked in to believe that things can be better. You got anything you want to say? Oh, you're I am. Okay. Well, not, it's not, there's nothing you want to say on what's not, already been stated? Not yet. Okay. Okay, so she's experiencing this abuse. Well, anyway, recently the lady and her husband were scheduled to go to an event. The husband calls ahead, tells his wife to go ahead and go to the event because he was going to be late due to work. So um, the lady goes ahead and goes to the event, is waiting for her husband to arrive at the event. And unfortunately, he does arrive at the event, but he's with another woman. How bold is that? And the woman that he arrives to the event with is somebody that he introduced his wife to weeks before. So, I mean, just another level of blatant disrespect and dysfunction. Are you going to say anything about what's being said is what I'm saying. I don't want to feel like I'm just talking and talking and talking. Yes, I am. I'm just waiting for you to recap. 
I'm not recapping all at once. We're doing it piece by piece because of so much. Okay. Anyway, so the lady sees that her husband is there. What's going on, Thomas? Sees that her husband is there with this woman that he introduced her two weeks ago. And the fact that he paraded her around the, the event, the person he came in with, he paraded her around as though they were a couple instead of his, him and his wife was a couple, which was another level of disrespect. He also cusses her out and humiliates her, not only privately, but publicly. And she gives him all her money and holds him down no matter what. My question is, what love got to do with it? So what advice can we give a person like this, her friend? Um, to me, this thing's very one-sided. Um... There's really nothing to fight for. One person can't fight. It takes both people fighting for the relationship and wanting the relationship. <clears throat> it seems like he just wants to control her and he really doesn't love her. It's, it's quite evident that he doesn't love her because if he loved her, he wouldn't hurt her. Um, should she continue? I would start stop. Stop piling my money um, to move on and get out. Well, what if she don't want to get out? I mean, because it's evident that she's still in the marriage, <laughs> even though she's tired, just because a person is tired of fighting doesn't necessarily mean that they've given up on the marriage. I get that, but why continue to be verbally abused and physically abused. He's not only talking down to her. He's also beating her. And raping her. That's another, another whole other subject. In marriage. Because the Bible says. Your body is your spouse's. So. There ain't no no in marriage. But what if we're not religious? It don't matter. People follow the Bible. They follow pieces of the Bible. So <laughs> Really? I guess it don't matter. I don't know. We follow pieces of the Bible? Yeah, people follow pieces of the, pieces of the Bible. <laughs> you know, know that. <laughs> There's nothing new. I get that. But, I mean, we're not following the Bible anyway. So why does it even matter lies what's lies Angie what's lies then I bet you saying <laughs> that a no is not a no oh. there are no no's in marriage oh, oh okay but it should be well let's not get off topic let's this we could talk about that but Let's talk about what causes people to stay in relationships that are abusive. First of all, let's, let's think about this woman's mindset. And why people in these types of dysfunctional relationships continue to maintain hope that the person is going to change or that the situation is going to change. Because that person that they keep holding on to gives them a, a glimpse of hope because they show little, give gifts, um, give them a little attention. The things that they've been asking for, they'll do it for a little bit and then they'll, they'll resort back to their old ways. So they do it just enough to keep keep the person that's being abused holding on. A hostage. Yeah. And so with that being said, they need that attention, that that whatever they desire from that person. So they hold on because it's like, oh, well, they did this. So 
they are changing, but in reality, they're not. They're just using that as a, um, what is it? Uh, 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 I can't think of the word. <laughs> but yeah, just using that to keep them holding on. But after years of it, you would you would think that a person would come to the realization that, okay, they fooling me. I'm not going to, they're not going to change. Um, they ain't changed by now, so they're not going to change. I mean, you would think, but when you deal with people who have been abused and abused and abused and abused and abused and abused and abused, and abused they develop these mindsets, especially if it's been verbal abuse. Nobody's going to want you. You're stupid. You're dumb. Nobody's going to want no stupid, dumb woman. I'm the only person that will love you. People start believing that. Right. People start believing that. So it's then in their mind is why try? Why leave the one person, <clears throat> excuse me, that, that loves me? Why leave the one person that's going to show me attention, even if it's abusive? attention or negative attention so i mean people are held hostage and they just say low self-esteem yep that's the biggest thing um and esteem really needs to be put and built in a person when they're younger that way when they are older and in relationships they are more uh knowledgeable of what they will and will not accept when that esteem is built when they're younger. True. I believe that, but I believe that when love is involved and it's somebody that they want, then to some degree, their own self-esteem may not matter. In some cases, not every case. You do have some people that are pushed through it. They're going, when a person's self-esteem is at a certain level, I, I'll say at, at a, at a safe level, then there's just, there's going to be a limit and a line that they're going to accept. And beyond that, it's a no for them. You know what I'm saying? Right. They're going to get out. They're going to move on. Whether it's just a dating situation or whether it's a husband and wife situation. Right. I mean, it's only so much negativity that some people are going to take. Sure. I know a lot of times people are held captive by not just the abuser, but by their belief system. Yeah. A lot of times people believe, well, I have to stay in this abusive situation. I have to accept this negativity. I have to accept this dysfunction because what will the church say? What will the, the Christians say? What will my family say? What, you know, my grandparents been together for 50 years and my parents been together for so many years and this and that, and they're held captive to a whole by a whole system of belief or history. Right. And it's not healthy. Not at all. And I just believe that it, it, if you are in an abusive situation, whether it's physically, mentally, sexually, or whatever the case may be, you have to make up in your mind when, it, when enough is enough. And you have to, number one, love yourself enough to get out of that type of situation. Yeah. If it's a situation to where you hate coming home, where you hate uh, every time you say hello or good morning or, or you do any type of nice gesture or kind gesture and it's knocked down and you're greeted with some type of negativity behind that and accusation, that's not a healthy relationship. It is not. It's not. And I don't feel that you should have to be held hostage in those types of situations. She said, but some women's mindset is stronger than most men's. True. However, some men have learned, those that are weak men, have learned how to use that against women and make them hot and have them hot hold them hostage to needing them and it's it's vice it, it could go either way there are some women who are abusive verbally 
Yes. And physically. Yes. Very dysfunctional. Yes. That always got to be trying to be in this boss, excuse my language, B-I-T-C-H position. She got the she got to dominate and she tears a man down and you know it says all manner of evil and she got to control the money and it's you know it, it could go either way, you know. The abuser could be a man or a woman, you know what I'm saying? But I believe that you you have to, number one, you have to pull yourself out of the negative environment, away from the source of the negativity. And surround yourself with people that are going to affirm and reaffirm and help you reestablish your self-esteem, your self, self-worth, um, all of that. You need a good support structure. And I'm not talking about a support structure. Girl, you should have left him a long time ago. Girl, you should have done it. Not that type of mentality. Even though they're right. But you you don't want to surround yourself with that type of support structure because that further perpetuates some negativity too and beats a person down that, hey, you know what? They're right. I should. And there's ways to encourage people with the truth. Right. So. So, I mean, th this lady has been going through a whole lot. I mean, it's terrible that her husband is being cheating on her under the guise of I'm out doing work. <laughs> he doing work all right. Out doing work. That's why you need to check these time sheets, mm -hmm. these check stubs, all of that. All right, uh, Medea. <laughs> I'm just saying, if stuff's not adding up, <laughs> Medea. better start investigating. But this whole incident at the 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 event for me that would have been a deal breaker. I mean, yeah, that that would have been the straw that breaks the camel's back and say, you know what? If after all of the other times of being publicly humiliated, this is it. Yeah. You don't even acknowledge me. Number one, you don't acknowledge me as your wife. You bringing somebody else to this event and parading them around. This, 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 that's safe. that's like that one of the highest levels of disrespect. And you don't even have to say anything else. You don't even have to tell me you don't want me. Right. At this point. Right. Because. I don't want you and I don't want this. <laughs> <laughs> you don't got to want me. You right. don't got to tell me that you don't want me. No. There's no, there's the way he didn't say was said at this right. point. And exactly. I'm, and I'm sure he has told her I don't want you. Yeah. Numerous times, but but then it's oh here we go oh I love you you my wife I need you so they can get her money yeah so no yeah baby yeah you, friend you right you we don't want her to hit him upside the head with the frying pan unless he's beating on her then she can and we can call that self defense I'm just saying but uh, <laughs> she won't go to jail for that. Or throw some hot grits. But, uh, uh yeah. <laughs> but, yes, she should just walk away. She doesn't talk about there being any children involved. So, I mean, get yourself together and walk away. Yeah. For your own sanity. Um. That's, that's what your friends should do. This is beyond abuse. This is... Yeah, because y'all know we are advocates for making things work if they if you if if they can be worked we say work through them it's not always abandoning a situation or the relationship is not always the best first line of defense or action right um because some things can be worked out. You know, I know in our relationship, and we talked about this last week, either two weeks ago, just amongst ourselves, is that, you know what? When we look at our stuff compared to other people, some other people's stuff, we could have got our stuff together a long time ago. It was very minute and very minuscule. And you know what I'm saying? 
even with cheating, I think you can recover from cheat some your spouse is cheating. Yeah. But he's doing more than just cheating. Yeah. He, he just he he really doesn't want to be in the relationship. And then this is my thing. Why is it that rusty Negroes mm -hmm. are in situations and circumstances and relationships that they themselves are showing and saying that they don't want to be in, but yet they won't leave? Why? Why is that? Can somebody help us? This is not a rhetorical question. We really want answers. I mean, if you are in something or if you're connected to somebody that you don't want, or a situation that you don't want to be, why aren't you the one that leaves? Right. And leave them alone. And leave them alone. Excuse me, y'all. <laughs> why, people? Why? Why is that? That's that's a terrible, that's a terrible situation to keep having somebody yo-yo, yo-yoing in a relationship up and down, up and down, in and out, back and forth, and won't never leave. Like a bad cold. Hmm. I don't know. Well, but you don't want me. You don't want me. You don't love me. I'm nothing. Nobody else will want me. Then why are you with me? Bye. Leave. Angie said, well, first Tim said, yeah, bust your head. Disrespect. But then Angie said, they are obviously receiving some sort of benefit from it. Gotta be. Right. Gotta be. That's why they won't leave. But they really don't want this person. I think what it is, they don't want the person they're with, but they know don't nobody want them. Right. Don't nobody want no crispity, crackly, crunchy, rusty. <laughs> and, and is a good word. <laughs> Y'all like our PG? We come into 2020 trying to. I'm be trying PG. to be, I'm trying to clean it up. In these last and evil days, because we got, we, you know, we we got some goals that we want to reach, and I don't want to be censored. I want to be more appealing, but I'm gonna keep it real now. That's why you gotta come to YouTube. But uh, yeah, yeah, be the main ones that do something. They ain't got. They don't have nothing to offer nobody. They sex ain't even good. <laughs> Sex ain't even good. Mm -mm. Cause you you broke, you ain't got a pot to piss in, no window to throw it out of. So why? What is it? Anyway, so yeah, you like I, I my point was getting to this. Usually we, you know, we're advocates for people working things out when both parties are willing to do exactly. the work. But then there, when, when you are in the, a cycle and a system of abuse, first of all, you got to recognize it as abuse. Mm -hmm. You have to recognize that this is abuse. You got to recognize that this is dysfunctional. You got to recognize that this is dangerous. This is, this is detrimental. That this is, is, is uh, uh, demolishing. It's nothing that's going on that's building you up. It's nothing that's helping you. It's nothing that's healing you or adding value, or adding value to nothing. you. None of that is going on. That's when you're in an abusive situation and you need to get out. Right. Because anytime you're in a relationship with, uh, uh, when you're married, we should be building each other. I shouldn't be tearing him down and he shouldn't be tearing me down. Even with... Even if it's criticism, it should be corrective criticism so it can And be done in love Thank and with you. love. Thank you. He shouldn't be calling me the B word. I shouldn't be calling him the B word. Because <laughs> women do that too. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're right. <laughs> but yeah, we, if we, we are supposed to be because back to the Bible, if he is abusing me, then that's just like abusing himself. And what person would abuse himself unless they're crazy? First of all, abuse is a sign that a person doesn't love themselves anyway. And that is true. How can you, because if I love me, mm -hmm. then loving you is really no problem. Exactly. And loving others is no problem. Exactly. If I love me. Right. But if I'm abusive to me, 
then of course I'm going to be abusive to you. Right. If I don't believe in me, it's going to be hard for me to believe in you and other people. That's just the way things go. So if I can't edify and build my own self up, I'm not going to be able to do that to nobody else. Right. Thus, you being the partner that's, that's willing to fight for the relationship, you can't help a person that don't want to be helped. First of all, if <laughs> if if both of y'all are not showing up to the ring, if both of y'all are not putting the gloves on and climbing in the ring to fight for the relationship, it's a lost cause. It is. You might as well go into you might as well get into another sport. <laughs> you, you might as well you might as well find something else to do. Right. Because it's not even gonna be worth it because you're gonna be exhausted. You're going to be frustrated. It's going to be so much more that comes into play when two people don't climb in the ring together. Because you're going to be like a hamster on a wheel. On a wheel. Spinning mud. <laughs> you might as well You might as well save that energy for somebody that, that's going to be able to reciprocate. That's going to fight for and with you just as hard and just as much as you do. Because you're spinning wheels and getting nowhere. Yeah. It's going gonna, it's gonna to come up with some resolutions and some um, answers. Tim said, um, I guess to answer our question too, because they're sorry and don't have anywhere else to go, just damn sorry. And she must be getting food stamps or makes a hell of a lot of money. Must be, bro. <laughs> Must be. <laughs> Cause my thing is this. <clears throat> I mean, we've gone through a lot of situations, financial situations, all kinds of situations. Um, and you know what? People talking about the, the sex. Listen, when you're going through financially, the last one of the last things you're concerned about is sex. Now that's the truth. Because sex don't pay no bills, not unless you selling it. Right. And if it ain't good, then you ain't making no money. Then you shouldn't be selling it. Right. Keep that to yourself. Exactly. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> Tim said, don't say her. She don't want to be saved. In this right. case, he don't want to be saved. Exactly. <clears throat> well, the wife scene don't want to be saved either because she ain't trying to get out. Right. She want to maintain something that is it's dead. I mean, this is <laughs> this n word is 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 already he been cheating, but he done brought his hoe to the event like she the main, and you you ain't even a side. You ain't even on the plate. Mm -mm, you ain't even in the refrigerator. Mm -mm. High level of disrespect, <laughs> and you tell me you gonna go home. And fight for this N word <laughs> to stay with this N word. I know you lying. <laughs> you gonna cry and, and one why you did this to me? Why you do me like this? Ah, no, uh -uh. no more. <laughs> I would have left the event, mm -hmm. packed my clothes, withdrew all the money out of the accounts. Right. Got me a hotel or went to my friend girl's house. Right. And that would have been it. The end. That part. When I went to work the next day, I would have told him, do not take any calls from him. If he comes on the property, call the police. Right. <laughs> All of that. Yes. It's not even worth it. My point is, is that people, we got to learn to value ourselves. Learn to value yourself. Learn to be your biggest cheerleader. Stop waiting for somebody in the relationship to cheer you on and cheer you, cheer for you for everything that you do. Now, Grant, if they cheering, that's fine. But don't cheer for somebody so much that you never cheer for you. Because your cheering for others can only be as strong as you cheer for you, in my opinion. And at the same token... You can't be that spouse 
too that cheer so much for yourself and it's all about you that True. you forget that, that this is a team. Right. And that we need to be boosting each other. Right. Because if you own a team, <laughs> quote unquote, <laughs> and your spouse is the star player, they the center, the point guard, <laughs> the coach, the cheerleader, the everything, then something is wrong with that picture too. Yeah, it is. It can't be so one-sided. Yeah. Not to say that nobody, that one person can't be good at all these different positions, but right. damn, I mean, excuse me. <laughs> Hell, I mean, let somebody else get in the game. Right. Show their skills. Help them build their skills. And develop so you can be a stronger championship team. Yeah, exactly. Because they might just be um, um, apprehensive. They probably got the ability, the potential to do those other positions, but never had anybody there to assist them or push them or encourage them to do it. So that's why it's important for us to work as a team so that we can encourage people, encourage each other in our, our, I guess, weaknesses that seemingly are weaknesses to us, to ourselves. Right. <clears throat> All right. So do y'all have any opinion? Y'all have any uh, advice for... The um, emailer to share with her friend. Excuse me. Well, my advice wholeheartedly leave. <laughs> Expeditely leave. Stop fighting for something that's not worth fighting for. In this case, I don't personally. I don't think this marriage is worth fighting for. I I don't recommend staying in it. Um, I feel like the <laughs> energy that the lady is putting into the relationship, holding on to, I believe she can take that, replant it, redirect it. First of all, into herself. Absolutely. Personal endeavors to build up her self esteem, her all of that. To, to see that, you know, hey, I can do this, I can be this, and to heal all of those years of abuse. Absolutely. And then be ready to hopefully, if she would like to engage in a relationship with somebody else um, who's not going to do or repeat the same things that her husband is doing. Right. And not look to that other person to fill all of her emotional buckets. Right. Um, but somebody who can add some into her buckets and cause the overflow and spill over. But first of all, mother, get healed. Yeah, get you. healed. <laughs> get out and get healed. Too many times people leave, that, leave out of one relationship and jump. Feel, and they think that jumping in another relationship, <coughs> excuse me, is the <coughs> excuse me is the best recourse. Yeah, and it's, it's not. not. Not at all. It's not. So, yeah. Make sure that you are healed and you are better and that you are a better candidate for somebody else. Right. Just as you wouldn't want to take on somebody else's baggage from a bad relationship. So it is. Don't carry bags into a relationship for somebody else to take care of. So. Right. Melissa said run and Tim said tell her to burn the road up put some un under her heels <laughs> <laughs> I agree wholeheartedly that she she need to leave and heal yeah become whole like you had said earlier surround yourself with um that positive energy to help build you as an individual so that you can stand on your two feet with or without somebody. Right. Um, and not having that need, being needy for somebody to fill all those empty spaces, those voids because of being raped, not just physically, but raped emotionally. Um from all this many years of abuse in a relationship. 
is it's a lot of healing and it's not going to take over it's, it won't be overnight it's going to take lots of time because you're looking at many 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 years of being in a relationship with a person like this right but i mean even a lot of times i want to say that people think that it will take just so many years to heal but i believe it's as quick as you make a decision to heal. That's the first part of healing is deciding that you want to be healed and deciding that you want to be better. Then doing the follow-up of making sure you do what it takes to do that consistently. Right. Because the same way you decide not to be better, the same way you can decide to be better and to stay better. It's a, con a, a constant Redeciding, if you will, to be better and to do better and to have better, because you could all you you could go six months of doing good and being better, and then wake up one day and just be bam, and I'm not gonna be better today. Right. And then to some degree, that will cancel out all of the the six months of work you were doing. Right. So it's easy as making a decision because even if you say, okay, today I'm not gonna be better. All you have to do is make a decision to be better at some point. So. All right. Well, that's 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 all I got to say. That's all I got. I say leave and leave quick. Mm -hmm. Um, Start a whole new life. Yeah. Starting with you being be in a relationship with you first. And um, I believe once you are in a good, healthy relationship with yourself and you're loving yourself first, you will attract mm -hmm. the right people who will reciprocate and receive and know what to do with your love right. and you. So. And it's okay to walk away regardless of your religious background or whatever upbringing nobody believed in divorce divorce is wrong no when it comes down to it's hurting you more than it when a marriage is hurting you more than it's helping the you bye <laughs> bye and that's with any relationship if a relationship is hurting you more than it's helping if it's not adding anything to you and it's always take 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 and tear down tear down tear down Mm -mm. And if it's like every time you see so, oh God, here they go, <laughs> oh, here she go, here he go, right. you already know what, it's, what it is and you can set, there, there, it's predictable and you can set your clock by, this, this is how this is going to go and then this is going to happen and then this is going to happen and then that's going to happen and it goes right like, mm -hmm. get out. Yeah, like the movie. Yeah. <laughs> so... All right, guys. Until next time. Yep, that's it. We Keep out. the conversation going in the comments. Make sure that you share this. Um, yeah, make sure you share. If you have a uh, topic that you want us to talk about or if you have something that you want us to discuss, please um, send us an email at officialmossmail at gmail.com. And we'll be more than happy to talk about it, develop it, research it, and present it. If you would like to be a guest host in the mailroom with us, um, let us know. Send us an email. We'll make sure that, that we um, set that up. Um, make sure that we you know, connect so that we can do that and have an enjoyable time. Uh, we don't mind sharing our platform with other people. Right. Um, Matter of fact, we encourage it. A lot of people just scared. I don't know why y'all so scared. <laughs> Never seen so many grown people so scared. <laughs> but I guess it's because we deal with things in a real manner and we deal with real topics and we look for real resolutions. A lot of people don't want that. A lot of people want to continue to play and have excuses for things, but it's whatever. But yeah. All right. So, all right, until next time. Whatever that's going to be, y'all have a good night. Good night, guys.